If you ask different people what smart cities are, you receive different answers. Here at the University of Salford, we have very multidisciplinary approach to the definition and research of smart cities. Cities face so many ecological challenges. Uh, in addition to those, we are looking into three other major challenges. The decline of infrastructure, the question of governance in cities, and what we call it the ecologies of cities, not just the ecologies in cities that many people are dealing with. The ecology which surrounds the smart cities agenda is very complex and there are many challenges for the uh, stakeholder organisations who need to find ways of, of working more effectively in a more integrated way. So therefore one of the key aspects of the whole of Smartest Cities agenda is uh, leveraging better value out of the big data resources that partner organisations uh, generate and, and, and possess. To that end, within the Think Lab, working uh, closely with Professor Terence Fernando, who's been leading this work, we've been exploring a number of, of case studies, working with public sector organisations in Salford and Greater Manchester, to explore some of these complex policy challenges. Um, and there is one that I particularly like to highlight, which is uh, Troubled Families, uh, which we undertook in collaboration with Manchester City Council uh, and with their uh, local partners, the police, health authorities. So we assembled a, a whole range of data from the different partner organisations and we visualised that data uh, spatially. And we also undertook some data mining work, which was about trying to understand some of the hidden patterns which uh, sat within this data, which could provide new knowledge, new insight, new analysis. So the message back to the City Council and their stakeholders was actually if there was an earlier intervention targeted at this cohort in this way to address absenteeism school, that could have a really positive outcome on the lives of those families and their children. At the Surf Centre we think it's a very important part of the agenda on smart cities to empower citizens through knowledge and information in urban areas to take control in, uh, of their own lives. We're doing that in three projects at the moment. The first one is a project funded by the EPSRC and Mr Urban Futures um, with the Biospheric Foundation in East Salford. There we are helping community residents to take control of the farm using digital technologies and think about how digital education learning platforms can be built. We're also working in Odsall, another area of Salford, through an Arts and Humanities Research Council project and there we're developing a method of engaging people in the smart city and the creative economy through developing their own ideas. And it's amazing to see the innovation and excitement that comes out there and be involved in things from making a marrow to participating in a community festival. We've also set up a digital platform with some of our partners in sustainability across Greater Manchester. And the portal on the platform is a way of giving voice to community initiatives, helping people find out what's going on in the policy world and some of the things that are happening around the city region, and trying to create a digital platform for us to share knowledge and information about how to make our cities a better place. Even smart cities are not inherently inclusive. In the built environment, we often create barriers and those barriers could be physical barriers that stop people living independently, or could be sensory in terms of sight and sound, cognitive or mental health issues. At the Salford, we have spent time looking at these issues, and tactile paving is one of the areas that we've studied intently at Surface Inclusive Design Research Centre. And this is an interesting example of conflict where this tactile paving can be very beneficial as a hazard warning system for people with vision impairment, but can conflict with the needs of other users who find it difficult to walk over. And our latest research with the Salford Institute for Dementia has looked at how we can help create a built environment that supports people to live well with dementia. We're entering the information age, and one of the great levelers is the democratisation of information. Part of that is the blending together of the physical world and the digital world. So therefore the digital built environment becomes just as important as the physical built environment to allow that inclusivity. Uh, we're doing lots of research on how that information allows people, both able-bodied and people with disabilities, to move around cities, to design cities with that in mind. 
and to ensure that everybody has access to the right sort of information at the right time. When we think about smart cities, the story for us really starts at the Salford Energy House. So we can look in a lot of detail about what works and what doesn't work in terms of energy efficiency. So often we won't have people in the house, but we'll expand our studies to include properties around the city where we can understand how people use their energy. But to really understand that, you have to understand how people live. And this gives us an awful lot of data to understand how we might deliver different services above and beyond energy efficiency to those people. A good example might be sheltered accommodation that has sensors in it to let you know if people are keeping the property warm enough or are using energy at all. And so if they're not using energy, then a service might be delivered to the occupant to see if they're okay. And you can expand that further to think about how people live in the city. So linking how they live in their home to how they use intelligent transport and how that links to the services that people use. So you can see, starting with the energy house, working up, all this data to can link together to deliver a truly smart city. There are 7 billion people living in the world and the same amount of mobile phones are in use. These are not a simple means of verbal communication as conventional phones used to be. They are an intrinsic part of our contemporary social behaviour, intermediating complex relationships among people and between people and place. The creation of resilient smart cities lies in the intersection between a better characterization of urban geographies, a better understanding of urban ecologies and the interplay of urban technologies. An example is the initiative of participatory noise mapping by combining expertise in acoustic engineering, information technology, urban design and social psychology. An app has been developed and tested to enable citizens to sense the noise in the environment, to learn about it, and to add important value to the big data from the knowledge and experience of the community. Our work at Salford on soundscapes and noise control is going to help the designers of smart cities. It's going to help them design the sound of the city to be the way that they want it to be. This is an entirely new possibility that's going to be brought about by two things happening at once. First of all, new technology in noise sources will mean that some of these will get a lot quieter than the ones that we're used to, so combustion engines being replaced by electric vehicles, for example. They will be able to engineer a space so that it sounds calm, or another space so that it sounds vibrant. These are all possibilities that are going to happen in the very near future as we translate our soundscape research at Salford into practice. As you can see, at the University of Salford, we have a very multidisciplinary approach to smart cities where people are in the center uh, of our approach um, because we believe that it's all about providing them with smart and healthy uh, futures. Mm -hmm.